we're gonna take a little break from the V10 Ultima build here and we're gonna work on my Supra. So last year, about two years ago, I put in a twin disc clutch and I'm not happy with it. It's a lot like, very much like an on off switch. Not very easy to drive, not very fun to drive unless your course on the drag strip or the racetrack. So I'm gonna change out the clutch. While I'm gonna do that, I'm going to put in a brand new master cylinder, an upgraded Willwood master cylinder and which is gonna require a little bit of an adapter plate and all these parts I got from Granis Racing with all of his awesome six-speed transmission swap conversion parts. We're gonna put some of those to use today. This Supra, this 85 Supra I have, I did swap out to a six-speed T56 Magnum transmission, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna move back to a single disc clutch uh, to improve drivability on the street. Should be enough for the power. I'm only running around 450 wheel horsepower at this with this car, but uh, let me run through the car real quick and then we're gonna jump in and get started on uh, upgrading the clutch. All right, so here is my 1985 Celica Supra. I actually bought this sight unseen uh, from a guy in Arizona. I wanted a car that had no rust in a warm, dry state like Arizona is the place to buy a no rust car. It needed a whole new paint job because the paint was baked off from it, but uh, I took care of that myself many years ago. As you can see, exterior, bunch of upgraded parts. I've actually got uh, a carbon fiber hood with slotted vents here. That's really nice. That saves about 30 pounds off the front of the car. And then on the rear of the car, I've got a carbon fiber hatch. And again, that saves, I don't know, maybe another 30 or 40 pounds off the top side of the car as well so definitely uh, with the carbon on top the weight the center of weight and mass is dropped lower and you could feel it on the street it drives incredible a couple other things to note on this i've actually got some replica wheels notice the design on these wheels are much like the original 14 inch celica supra wheels but these are were cut by coddington wheels we had a group buy, a bunch of super owners, Mark II super owners had a group buy. Those are 17 by 8 front and 17 by 10 rear wheels. I upgraded the brakes because I upgraded the power of the car, which I'll show you in a moment. So I've got Willwood brakes in there, and so the 14 inch wheels obviously would not fit over those brakes. And so I was fortunate enough to get in on a group buy with a set of these awesome replica wheels. Willwood brakes in the rear as well. So all four corners upgraded brakes. So let's take a look at the interior. Interior in this is mostly stock. It's in really good shape. I did replace some of the seat trim that was worn out, but other than that, the pretty much the interior is the way it was when I got it. A few upgrades interior, I upgraded the gauge cluster. I got these gauges from Speed Hut and you can see some of the cool branding and logos I've got on those on those gauges so that's kind of trick air fuel meter or boost boost meter air fuel meter and then of course the six-speed transmission with a factory mark 4 or a kind of an aftermarket mark 4 shift knob again I got that from Granis racing as well when I did the six-speed swap Upgrade the radio, that's just a Toyota factory head unit, I think out of a 4Runner or something. Fits right in the slot, but everything else on this car, interior-wise, is pretty much factory. So let's pop the hood here. All right, so there is the power plant. The famous 2JZ GTE engine i upgraded it with took the, the stock twins off from it and put on a single precision turbo 6262 ball bearing turbo spools nice spools quick and for the power i'm running it's just perfect it runs great uh, preserved the factory mass airflow unit i'm running the ecu out of a 98 twin turbo mark 4 supra and it runs it works great no issues, turnkey. Again, I'm, I'm only running about, I don't know, 14, 15 pounds of boost because the differential in this car now is the weak point. So I'm pretty careful on this. But uh, I've got an intercooler 
plumbed in down there. Nice big front mount intercooler. And the rest, it almost looks like this engine looked like it just dropped in there uh, as it was always intended. It came out nice. So anyways, so first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna get these this car up on the lift. I have to do some uh, car gymnastics here, get the Aston out of the way, take the Cobra off the lift, put the Supra on the lift so I could start to do this work. Clutch master cylinder is right here. This is what we're gonna be removing and replacing as, I, um, as part of my clutch swap here as I get going on this. Let me show you the parts that I've got here. One of the things I'm gonna be upgrading to while, when I do this uh, clutch swap is this awesome bell housing. Granis Racing creates his own bell housing. So this is a bell housing that goes mates to the 2JZ motor and on the transmission side, it mounts up to the T56 Magnum six speed transmission. So QuickTime makes a steel bell housing. Uh, Granis Joel decided to fabric have his own custom aluminum bell housing, it makes it a much quieter uh, clutch area, reduces the noise, dampens the noise, and just is a very nice unit. So I'm gonna be moving, replacing my QuickTime bell housing with this one while I'm at it. And I've also got a new hydraulic uh, release bearing uh, from Tilton. Again, Granis, Granis supplies all this stuff in his kit. I've got a new McLeod clutch there. That's a single disc, but it's got a higher 2200 pound clamping rate on it and a new OEM flywheel, just steel flywheel to go along with it. Here is the new Clutch Master upgraded to three quarter inch barrel on this and then the adapter plate. Again, Granis made this to adapt this to the chassis of the Mark II. So pretty psyched to get, uh, to get that in place. All right, let's get these cars swapped around, get the Supra up on the lift and get started with this project. Minutes late. All right, I've got the master cylinder, clutch master cylinder all installed. That is the new Willwood unit, three quarter inch, and the adapter plate that uh, Granis ships with his kit. Makes it super, super simple. Dash three AN line off the side, that'll go down towards the clutch. This is the Toyota factory clutch master cylinder. I think I actually put this in there when I did the 2JZ swap on the engine originally, so it's, it's not that old. Held up pretty well. Next up, I gotta take the interior apart, get ready to drop the transmission. Let's get to it. Got 
car jacked up here on the lift and figured I'd show you guys what it's gonna take to drop the transmission. Uh, so I'll be replacing this bell housing. This is a steel bell housing. QuickTime makes it and Granis Racing modified it to work with the T56. This, the steel definitely resonates and the clutch is pretty dang loud with that in there. So the aluminum, the new aluminum cast bell housing that Granis built. Anyway, with the Mark II, the way you take the transmission out is you first have to pull the drive shaft, of course, and the drive shaft, because of the way this cross member is here and the drive shaft passes through the cross member, you can't simply unbolt it from the diff and drop it out. In this case, you have to drop the diff. So fortunately, it's not too hard. You unscrew uh, the CVs on the diff side, both, and I just tie wrap those up out of the way. And then there's a couple of bolts on the side, both sides, and then a couple of bolts on the top on each side. And then the diff just drops straight down out of the way. Then you can, of course, unbolt the drive shaft, get the diff out of the way. Then you can slide the drive shaft all the way back out through the cross member hole that's there. Then you can start to unbolt the cross member here and unbolt it from the engine and then lower this thing out of the way. So that's what we're gonna do so we can put in all those new fancy parts. So let's get to it. Okay, transmission is out. T56 Magnum right here. I'll be replacing the uh, hydraulic throwout bearing on this as well since I think this one's pretty much shot. But uh, replacing the clutch, that's the twin plate Clutch Masters 750 or I guess 850, 850 series. While I'm in here, I figured I'd show you where I had to massage the tunnel to fit this bell housing and transmission setup. You can see here, I had to pound in a little bit with a hammer just to make some room, as well as here in this spot. And then I just used some seam sealer and just resealed it, resealed it where it, it separated a little bit when I was pounding away. So uh, that's all that took. And then normally there's a, a fuel vacuum purge line, as well as a couple of fuel lines that go up here, I relocated them to down here. So, in fact, the fuel line, you could see twists and turns. I didn't, I didn't bother shortening it, so I had to make these funky turns in here, but um, that's, you can bend that carefully without kinking it, and you're good to go. So that's really all that was required for the tunnel modifications to get the T56 Magnum to fit in a Mark II Supra. So, Pretty cool. So we're gonna swap out this steel quick time bell housing for the Grenasse bell housing, aluminum cast bell housing that's over there. We're gonna swap out the clutch too with a, a single disc 2200 pound pressure plate and it'll make drivability a heck of a lot easier. This, this twin plate is overkill for my application. I'm only running around, I don't know, 400, 420 pounds or uh, foot pounds of torque. So. The single disc will be just fine. That's just way overkill, that twin disc. So anyway, let's keep going. Let's get after this.
On this T56 Magnum, a few folks have asked me about how I'm hooking up the uh, speedometer. I have a electronic speedometer, uh, new gauges, digital gauges from Speed Hut, and I made a custom shroud. But uh, if you still have your, if you're an MK to Mark II owner and you still have your mechanical speedo, there is a provision for one right here on this. You take out this cover, you pull out this plug, and you can put a mechanical speedo in there. Never done it, but I'm told that's possible. So you could retain your factory Mark II gauge cluster with this mechanical speedo. So that's that. I have got the new throwout bearing in, in place. It's right here. I've got it, I measured and got it adjusted exactly where it needs to be, about one eighth of an inch away from the fingers on the clutch when it's in resting position. I've got the clutch in place, bell, new bell housing in place, and man, that thing is that thing is super sweet. So I'll be now bolting up the transmission back in place onto this onto this brand new bell. Should quiet it down, sound a little bit smoother, and dampen some noise coming from the clutch area. So much better. All right, let's get going. All right, transmission is back in the car, starting to reassemble everything here. Pretty straightforward job, nothing to it. I've only done this maybe a half a dozen times since I've owned this car, pulling in, in and out transmissions and doing engine swaps in the whole nine yards. So pretty straightforward. Let me show you what I got. All right, so brand new cast aluminum bell housing, which is awesome. And I think one of the best parts of this custom bell is the size of the window. Literally, you can see the throw out bearing to check its spacing is correct. And literally, I can almost fit my hand in that hole. So very cool window, extra big window in there and uh, bolted right back up. It's pretty tight, again, into the uh, tunnel opening in here not a lot of clearance to spare that is for sure you can see how tight it is up there but it fits so anyways we're going to get uh, the rest of this bolted in get the drive shaft put back in and then the diff put back in and we'll we'll get on the road and do a do a test drive so let's get to it clutch from Granis Racing again with the T56 Magnum transmission all squared away I haven't driven this only to just move it off the lift uh, back into the under the ground in the garage bay so uh, I gotta break this thing in so I'm not gonna be able to get too hard on the gas but we'll get it warmed up we'll do a kick drive quick drive I'll give you some insight as to how it feels just moving it off the lift felt great 
um, no chatter, much less of an on-off switch like that twin disc that I that I replaced. So anyway, let's go for a quick let's go for a quick blast here. sunlight. See all the dust. Cycle 
break in, basically 1,200 clutch pushes until it's uh, until it's broken in. So it's going to be easy on it, but. the gauges here set there's five LEDs on there uh, and it's basically a sequence of shift lights so as you go up the lights iterate up and then will flash indicating a shift point to the Mark IV Supra with the center tack gauge, speedometer, and then your integrated uh, telemetry gauges, analog gauges on the left. I made a, a gauge cluster shroud. I 3D printed uh, a gauge cluster shroud. You can't see this head on, but it is uh, three-dimensional in that the center gauge, the tachometer, actually sticks out about a quarter inch more than the other two gauges that flank it kind of a little bit more in your face. Just cool. Alright guys, that's it. That is the job. And uh, once I get this clutch broken in, I'll be sure to do another video with some rolling shots. I think I'm going to get my son and my wife involved. We'll go have them roll down the highway, get some rolling shots, and so forth. So I got to practice up with the rolling shots for that thing. That's going to be sweet. So anyways, next video, we'll be back on the Ultima build. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Music